I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge M620 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly configure the system. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge M620 Blade Server. If you find anything useful in this video, do us a favor and click the like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's get started. Uh, first off, this is the next generation to the uh, M6. Uh, 10 blade server um, and basically it's the exact same as the R620 server from a memory and CPU standpoint the only difference is really it's not um, is the really the form factor um, and the number of hard drives that you can put in uh, but really you have to have it uh, there's no power supplies you have to have uh, the M1000 in each chassis to plug it in and actually power it on so that's what you need uh, to pair with the um, the M620 uh, so let's go ahead and get started on the CPUs there are uh, two CPU sockets uh, which is an LGA 2011 socket uh, utilizes Intel Xeon E5 2600 V1 or V2 series CPUs. Uh, there are 24 DIMM slots inside, believe it or not, in this little uh, form factor. There are 24 DIMM slots, and there are uh, which utilize DDR3 memory. Uh, there's a couple different sizes you can use. You can go as low as uh, 2 gig, 4 gig, uh, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig as long as you're using load reduce. And we'll talk about that more here in a minute. Um, and there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can use uh, 1066 megahertz, 1333, uh, 1600 or 1866, uh, but most of the time the 1866 is just going to clock down to the 1600, so just know that going in if you are going to get the 1866. Um, as far as the type of uh, RAM that you can use, there's two types. There's ECC registered, also known as RDIM, and there's load reduced memory, also known as LRDIM. Uh, with ECC registered, you can put in 1632 gigs to max out at 512 gigabytes at 1600 megahertz, but with load reduce, you actually get three times the capacity and you can put in 24 64 gigs at 1600 megahertz and that always leads to a question that we hear all the time is well why can I put in 24 load reduce and I can only put in 16 of the ECC registered and that's what's known as the rank rule, rank rule and we'll talk about that in a few minutes when we open this up uh, but before we open it up uh, I want to grab my ESD gear because really you never want to be inside a machine unless you're wearing ESD gear you got to keep it safe so we'll be right back all right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, you want to push this blue tab right here and pull the top back and just simply lift it up. And voila, we are in the machine. So um, really, it's uh, uh, pretty simple overall. Uh, that's the nice thing about blades is as soon as you open the top, really, you're, you're right in the machine. Uh, you have access to both the CPUs, you have access to all the modules, and you don't have to really you know, worry about air baffles or uh, any cages or anything that are on top of it. So it's uh, just really nice and convenient. So uh, really the only thing that you need to remove um, is going to be this uh, piece right here. Um, you're just going to lift it straight up, and you now have access to the back right here. So really outside of that, it's, it's uh, like I said, pretty easy to get into. So uh, this is CPU 1. Uh, so if you were only running one CPU, you need to make sure you install it right here. CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots right here. And CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots right here. Uh, honestly, I recommend if you're if you're working on uh, Blades as a whole, really, uh, it, the kind of the idea is that it, for it to be its own dedicated server, uh, and you can have a whole bunch of them in a, a tight, com, uh, confined space. And so really, you, you do want to put two CPUs in, in my opinion. Um, and really, I would put at least 12 DIMMs in if you're not going to go ahead and fully max it out with 24. I'd at least put 12 in. So, uh, But anyhow, on that note, let's go ahead and get started. I want to show you how to actually physically take them out and put them back in. Um, right now, you'll notice there are a lot of these black blanks in here. The old configuration that uh, this had it was only uh, two DIMMs on each side, and they're actually only uh, two 8 gigs, so it's 16 gigs um, on each side for a total of 32 gigs for the blade, which is really a, a pretty weak configuration. Uh, what we have over here are uh, 32 gig DIMMs, um, so we're going to put in 24 of the um, 32 gig LR DIMMs uh, and go ahead and max it out at uh, 768. So uh, on that note, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. So. Um, one of the things I also do like to note is since you're starting over here on CPU 1, uh, you need to be careful with the uh, the channels. Um, and actually, let me go ahead and take these out first, and then we can discuss it a little bit more. And one thing to note when you get to uh, this side over here, uh, you're going to have this in the way. You just want to pinch the blue clip. It's going to pop up. And then this will come straight up. So I'm just going to lift this straight up and just be careful because it is connected in. 
uh, and now you'll have access to the uh, the back side over here and uh, really um, if you're not familiar with uh, these black blanks that I'm taking out right now um, really they're, they're a really cheap investment that um, you can put them inside your dim slots and basically just prevents them from getting damaged um, it you know they're really like a buck or two and I recommend them if you're ever just have extra spaces left over because really if you're at a data center and you're running a bunch of different servers you can invest you know a couple hundred bucks in something like this and really one time that it prevents from a uh, board going bad uh, you save all your money and uh, just prevent issues and time headaches so all right well now that we have just the modules left in here I saved these for last because I wanted to show you how to uh, take these out because um, I've seen it happen uh, all too many times where uh, if you just like say you put both your hands right here and you push both tabs down at one time the module has a tendency to want to just kind of shoot straight up and because there's so many uh, capacitors and resistors and little parts on the, uh, the side of the dims uh, and on the motherboard for that matter uh, if the dim shoots up it could come down it could damage a dim slot could damage the module next to it could damage the motherboard uh, so really I always like to uh, put one a hand on top of it and the other hand to push the tab and then switch and then just one hand on top and the other hand to push the tab and that way you just prevent yourself from having uh, any issues with modules just flying up in the air and uh, potentially damaging something because nobody wants to spend money on um, an issue that they created on accident uh, that you don't really have to spend money on so uh, anyhow I'm doing that right now with these as far as just getting the tabs popped open and holding the module in place and then just put them over here on the ESD mat. So uh, now that we have uh, cleared out the old DIMMs, um, and this last one is a tight squeeze over here. Get my thumb. There we go. Um, now that we have cleared out the uh, the old DIMMs, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the memory channels and the rank rule, because I'm sure that's what a lot of people are here in the first place is to uh, kind of understand a little bit more about the rank rule and why. Uh, when they put uh, the the larger capacity ECC registers, they they can only put 16 DIMMs in here as opposed to uh, 24. Um, so, on that note, um, we discussed CPU one, CPU two. So now let's talk about the actual uh, the channels. Um, if you look at the uh, the DIMMs themselves, they're color coded and the motherboard itself is labeled, which makes it uh, very 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 helpful. Um, so when you look in here, um, you can see that uh, DIMM slot one is uh, it's A1 is this white slot right here and that's the start of the channel and then black and then green and then white again is the start of the next channel and this is A2 and then black and then green then you come all the way over here and white on the outside is A3 and then black second dim slot of the channel green third dim slot and then you have A4 right here the white dim slot so basically what that means is that there are four memory channels per CPU and there are three DIMMs per memory channel um, and this is very important that three DIMMs per memory channel is really key because uh, that is why you are uh, subject to the rank rule uh, because all 32 gig ECC registered modules are quad rank even all the 32 gig load reduced modules are quad rank for that matter uh, but any quad rank ECC registered modules you can only put eight ranks per memory channel that is what the rank rule states so if you were putting in some um, 32 gigs that are quad rank or even if you were using 16 gig uh, there's the 8500 which is the 1066 megahertz the lower end one those are quad rank as well um, and it's popular because it's a, a, a cheap option for a 16 gig uh, but those are quad rank and the problem with that is is you can only put put them in the first two dims of the channel so if that is what you want to use which is fine you just note that you have to put it in the white in the black skip the green, the white and the black, skip the green, the white and the black, skip the green. So that's how you would load uh, any quad rank ECC registered. Now the lower end ECC registered like the, the 4 gigs and the 8 gigs and uh, a lot of the 16 gigs for that matter like the 1333 and the, the 1600 megahertz, all those are dual rank. You can load them completely up. You, you don't run into the rank rule because you're only getting to 6 ranks per uh, channel. It's the quad rank that pushes it above 8, gets you to, to 12 and then you run into that issue. So um, anyhow, load reduced uh, is a better technology um, and basically there's an extra uh, buffer chip on there that prevents um, uh, uh, the, the motherboard from seeing it as quad rank it actually sees it as dual rank so you are able to uh, load as many of them as you want in 
and you don't run into the rank rule issue. So uh, on that note, we're actually going to max this out right now uh, with a bunch of uh, 32 gigs. Well, excuse me, it's not technically max, you can put 64 gigs in, uh, but 64 gigs are pretty expensive, so uh, we use a ton of 32 gigs for uh, customers. So uh, on that note, um, before we put the modules in, there is uh, a, a key right here in the middle, this notch that you see right here. Now this key is very important because it's not the same for all modules. So for instance, you couldn't load a DDR2 module, you couldn't load a DDR4 module, but it's also important because if you look at the motherboard, there uh, there's a, um, a, a little notch that's, that comes out, a little plastic notch. So if you were to flip it the wrong way, you could damage the leads on the uh, memory module or you could damage the motherboard itself. So you just have to be really careful when you're loading them. It's a very common mistake that we see all too often. So we always tell people just be very careful when you're uh, when you're loading it up. Just make sure you line everything up properly. So we're going to start over here on A1. Just make sure that you get everything lined up properly. Um, and you'll notice the module is, is uh, physically in. You can see it's, it's in the slot. I'm not touching. I'm not holding it up. Uh, however, uh, the, the module is not fully seated. Uh, this is a problem that we see, unfortunately, all too often uh, where a customer thinks they have a bad dim slot and it's, or have a, has a bad dim, and it's not that the dim is actually bad, it's that the module is not fully seated. So you want to hear this right here. Listen for this click, and you want to hear it on both sides. Okay, that's how you know that the module is fully inserted. Uh, it's a very easy and uh, common error that happens all too often. Um, that was actually why there was a little break in that take a minute ago is because I had loaded it the wrong way. <laughs> so whether you're a, a technician that's been doing it for 20 years or you're brand new, it's an all too easy mistake that happens, um, you know, unfortunately all too often. So uh, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and finish loading all these up and we'll just hit the fast forward. So one thing I would like to note, you might have noticed uh, when I was doing this second section over here, um, I like to uh, do the outsides like this. Now this isn't proper if you're not fully maxing it out because let's just say if you're only putting in a certain amount of dims, you need to start with the start of the channel, which is the white dim slot that we should discuss. But since I'm fully maxing it out, uh, sometimes you get into a situation where you have, let's say a module already here, um, and this is already complete, and you got the heat sink, it's just kind of a tight, tight fit. Um, I like to kind of work my way back to the middle. It just makes it a little bit easier on me. Also, one other note is it flips from side to side. So, um, and it happened over here. And this is important because, again, you just got to make sure you're lining everything up properly. So it's really easy to to, to be in a good groove and just not notice that it, uh, it flips sides on you. So I just wanted to note that. All right, voila, just like that, uh, we were able to load everything up and uh, get this uh, all the way up to uh, 768 gigabytes. And like we said, you can't actually max it out all the way up to uh, 1.5 terabytes if you're using 64 gig LR DIMMs. Um, they are quite a bit more expensive than your uh, regular 32 gig. Uh, so we do um, a lot of configurations with 32 gig modules uh, just because your price per gigabyte, it's a, it's a pretty good price point. So anyhow, we're going to put it back together. Uh, so we're going to need to put this back in. So this is pretty simple, just line it back up and simply push it back down. There we go. And then we just we need to put this back on as well, so we need to open the clip back up. Same deal, just line it all up and put the clip back in place. So really, you can see it's a pretty simple job overall um, as far as just loading them up. If you're, if you're not maxing it out, it's just a matter of making sure you're paying attention to the channels, uh, which is pretty easy overall. Um, so really, it's just that simple. So uh, if you made it this far, hey, I appreciate you watching the video. Uh, do us a favor and uh, click the like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any upgrades for your data center and you have some M620s that you need to upgrade, uh, do us a favor and email our team at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And hey, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.